Hello, it's Leah with Scraptastic Patchwork, and I'm going to do something a little different than I normally do, and that is I'm going to make something from a pattern. This is a free pattern from allpeoplequilt.com. I will link it below so you can get all the information, materials, and the templates that we need for this project. So normally, even if I do consult a pattern, I usually tweak it and make it my own and do things different or I don't use a pattern at all because I prefer just making it up as I go which is why I'm very much into improv these days but I thought it would be a good contrast to to do this once in a while and make a pattern because I do think that obviously lots of people have amazing ideas and we need to utilize that as well as when you force yourself <laughs> to do something, which is what I'm going to do, and that is step by step, you could learn something from somebody else. So let's do this. It's not going to be difficult. Uh, it's a pretty easy pattern, but what's going to be difficult for me is sticking to the pattern, not changing it. Okay, so let's talk about materials. Again, I will link this below so you can get all the information you need. So the first, of course, is the materials. Okay, this, I'm not sure if I said what this was. I said where you can get it, but this is a Blooming Batik pin cushion. Super cute, and I want to collect pin cushions right now, so let's do a bunch of them. Okay, so materials for this Blooming Batik pin cushion are one three inch square of purple batik okay I cut that purple batik ready four five inch squares for the Dresden the mini Dresdens okay and it wants you to do green and blue and lime green even this even picking my materials and fabrics I was like no I don't want to be I don't want to just do those colors <laughs> and red but I'm gonna do it okay then a third yard of black and white batik and it wants you to do a full with a fabric strip I mean a full with a fabric third yard. I don't have that. So we're going to go with two fat quarters. And if I need to, I'll sew them together. That's just the way it's going to have to be because that's what I have. These are kind of more white with black than black with white, but it's still black and white batik, so I'm still sticking to what they tell me to do. So there's that. And then seven inch square thin batting or flannel and i have a ton of flannel scraps so i went in there and i got kind of batik looking super cheap flannel so i cut that into seven inches so there's that one and then scrap of freezer paper got a scrap of freezer paper which i was amazed that i found because I haven't used freezer paper for applique for a long time, but I had it. And then polyester fiber fill. That's the only thing I am doing different because I prefer pin cushions either with my own scraps or heavier weight with crushed walnut shells. So I figure it's okay if I deviate from the pattern a little bit because I prefer heavier pin cushions. So this is from my... I have... A large stash of this for my owl pin cushions that I make so that's just easy crushed walnut shells that you can get um, from like a pet store or you know Amazon has it I love it it's it's awesome for your pins and needles okay so those are the materials now we start I guess after oh we have to cut the fabrics see this is how hard for me okay next step cut fabrics 
Now I've rough cut my templates that they provide. And the first thing I'm supposed to do is cut out my circle on the purple. And I want to do that also leaving a seam allowance. So I will go ahead and do that with a quarter inch seam allowance that I'm just eyeballing. But if you wanted to obviously cut this perfectly, then I should have pinned this. Then you can draw that seam allowance on there. And I missed it completely. <laughs> okay. This is not the best way to do this on camera. So that is at an absolutely perfect circle. <laughs> the other thing you're supposed to do is onto your freezer paper, shiny side down onto the template, trace it, and then cut that out. Whoops, it jumped. And then what we're going to do is iron the fabric circle up onto this guy so that we do our little seam allowance. So you just put it there and then you iron all around so that your seam allowance gets pressed to this guy. Then you can take that off. So I didn't really enjoy that much. I think that I would prefer sewing a circle with two pieces of fabric, right sides together, slashing one of them, turning it so that there's a finish edge. That's just how I prefer, but I did it. So now I have experience turning an edge of an applique, applique onto freezer paper. So now I think you can just, after it cools, you can take it out, which makes it horrible. <laughs> okay, moving on. So I've pinned this guy. This is the flannel, and this is one of the body of the pincushion circles. So I'm going to trim my template as I'm cutting my fabric and then I will cut out the other circle, big circle like this. I think there's two of them for the pin cushion top and bottom. Yeah, see, isn't it funny how you get used to doing things a certain way and then the most basic of things become difficult if you try to do it a different way. <sighs> Cutting out a circle. I normally would not do this with a template. Good enough? Good enough. Okay, that guy's done. Now I will pin this guy to the other two batiks and cut out the top and the bottom. Then this little Dresden, you need three from each of these squares. So let me cut those out. I wanted to show you how easy it is to cut these guys out. So I just folded it in quarters. And then just place that on there and just use my scissors. Easy peasy. Oh, I took a little bit of the template in that one. It's so funny how things get so much harder when you're doing it on camera. Okay, so there's my little pieces of 
Dresden ready, ready for the next step. So I decided to redo this because I did not like how my little circle turned out. So I pinned it. I'll give myself a better seam allowance here. And then hopefully my second attempt at pressing my seams up on the freezer paper will be better. What I wanna do really bad is what I said, and that is just put two pieces together, sew them, and then flip them. But there has to be a reason why people do this, so I'm going to force myself to do it. All right, back over to the iron. So my second circle turned out better, but I still prefer my method of doing it, so I probably will not be doing this. Just feels messy and harder to do. So I've cut from the pattern my side piece here and my other two, my bottom and my top of the pin cushion out of the black and white batik. And now it's time to make my little Dresden plate thingies. So you fold them in half, right sides touching, and you sew across the top here a quarter inch and then get out the bulk by just a little clip there, right side out, press, and then start sewing them together according to their pattern. So I will do that off camera. Okay, those were super fun to make and I had no problem following the pattern because I had never made Dresdens before. Believe it or not, in all these years of quilting, I have never made Dresdens. So to make little mini ones like this, it was really fun. So this is what they look like after you turn them right side out and you press them. And now you sew them together and then you keep sewing them together until you get that whole kind of flower looking thing. So I'm gonna do that now. How cute is that? I like that. So I even sewed my Dresdens together incorrectly. The greens were not supposed to be touching, but I think it's still cute. And another thing that I normally wouldn't have done is pressed open all my seams. I get how that's important to having this lay flat. So that's another thing that normally I wouldn't have cared to do, but I did it because the pattern told me to. So now you find the center of one of them, of one of your pin cushion, this is obviously going to be the top. Center that on there. And your center. And now you can stitch that on. I think I'll just do a regular straight stitch. And then we're going to attach it to this, the flannel. And then we're going to kind of quilt it. And I'll just do an outline stitch around. And then we'll go on to the next step, which I believe is adding this. So I'm done attaching and stitching and quilting my Dresden plate flower to the top of my pincushion. I've attached it to the flannel piece. And full disclosure, I did go ahead and sew my two discarded circles together so that I can turn it. If I had started now that I know that I don't prefer that method at all of, turn, of folding and pressing the seams up onto freezer paper, I would have done a much better circle had I done it the way I normally do. But you have to stretch yourself and try other things to see if it works or not. And I discovered I didn't like that method. So I did an echo stitch twice. I'm sure I'm gonna lose some of my points in the seam allowance, but that's okay. And all, all that's left to do is to sew the side piece now per the pattern. I think it's a one and three fourths width. 
and I, and I think it's like 22 inches long. And then you sew it together to make kind of like a tube thingy. And then I'm going to go along here and pin it and sew it to this side. And then this one to that side, flip it. And then I can fill it with my crushed walnut shells. So I will bring you back for that step. So here it is before I fill it. So it's got sides now. And it's a little lopsided because that was my first attempt at sewing a side to a circular item. Never done that before. So another awesome reason, I guess, to attempt somebody else's pattern or design because you attempt things you've never done before. And I think what I have enjoyed doing this while I've been doing this is that when you do a pattern or when you do your own design, you have a visual of what it's ultimately going to look like. Now it may change a little bit, but you really kind of know what is going to happen. Whereas somebody else's pattern, even if you have a picture, you still don't know. For instance, I had, I could have measured, of course, but I didn't realize it was going to be this big. So when I start filling it with my walnut shells, it's going to get quite chunky. And I like that. I like that I was surprised by something in this pattern. And again, I think that's uh, a fun thing. So you learn skills, you try something you've never tried before, and you are surprised by the results. So I'm going to start filling this now. I think it's going to take a lot more than I thought it was going to take. So this is how I fill my big <laughs> items. And even my when I do my little owls, because I like using a filter or a funnel, <laughs> a filter, funnel. So I'm going to fill this with the little two inch opening I left for myself. And then when I'm done, I will hand sew it and show you the result. Oh my goodness. I absolutely love it. I love the feel of it. It's like, I don't know, there must be some kind of uh, calzone or some kind of item of food that it feels like to me, like a big, huge uh, pancake, huge, thick pancake. I'm sure there's something that I'm not thinking of that it, <laughs> it's shaped like, but it is because of my walnut shells. It's just so yummy. Oh, I love it. How cute is that? So let me put some pins in it to get the full effect here. But I think that this has been a fun challenge to see what it's like when you normally don't make patterns or follow patterns, people's patterns, and then you go ahead and do it. I think it, it's, you need both. You need to be creative in your own designs and you need to improv and you also need to learn from other people and try things that you normally wouldn't. So that's what I did and I enjoyed that I forced myself to not improvise in this particular project and uh, I highly recommend doing that and doing this particular one specifically too. So allpeoplequilt.com it's the Blooming Batik Pin Cushion. Uh, I will link below, as I said, right to the to their pattern so that you can follow the pattern to a T or not. Totally up to you. So have fun making your own pin cushion like this. Oh my goodness. Why do I love this so much? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. See you guys later.